Good evening. It is heating up at the rock in Tuane. My name is Adrian Bassoni. It's my pleasure to bring you the latest episode of Ballot Box from Tuane, the Elections Operations Center, as we call it, the rock. Tonight I'm joined by Mpumilelo Mkabela, our resident political analyst, as well as Davi Schools, our elections analyst. Good evening, gents. Good evening, We're walking straight into the coalition kitchen tonight because that is what we're going to talk about mainly tonight, coalitions. The votes are now almost finalized and with the help of our forecaster tool, we have a very clear idea of what happened in this election. A lot of interesting things happened, a lot of controversial things happened, and we will systematically work through them tonight. But let us start, Davi, with Etiquini, because that was the first big story of the morning, the first uh, forecast we made as News24 this morning. Um, the, the, the economic hub of KwaZulu-Natal, the city of Durban Falls in Etiquini. What happened there? Uh, just extraordinary result. I think for me, the, my single biggest surprise of an election of surprises, but this one was just a shocker for me. Um, the, the forecast right now, uh, the latest numbers is projecting for the ANC to go to 44%, um, the DA on 26%, EFF on 10 IFP on 6.5, so call it 7, and Action SA on 2. So just an extraordinary result, no majority there. Um, for, for the ANC um, and you know coming from a municipality where they used to be in the 60s relatively easily it's it's just a, a really shocking one and I'm sure we'll talk about it but I've I, I think I heard from you that uh, Jeff Ebe has now been sent down to KZN to go uh, deal with the situation and in Etiquini um, so I, I, just extraordinarily interesting. Dolby, can you remind us what the ANC got in 2016? Do you have that I do on, have on it your for computer? You. Yes. Just to give us an idea of the percentage drop or the percentage points drop. In 2016, they got 57% of the vote in yes. Etiquini. Um, we just said 44, so it's minus 13. 13 percentage yeah. points. Bumilelo, that is big news. I mean, there's a lot of big stories over the past two days, but that must probably end up as one of the top five stories of this election. A very important result uh, if it were to uh, come to that because not only was the ANC a, having a huge majority in the past but it was certainly a growing region for them uh, both in terms of uh, public support but also internally in terms of recruiting membership you recall that the Eteguini region it's the biggest region of the ANC in the country in terms of membership it's been swaying conferences uh, in terms of leadership contestations whether you're talking about uh, Pulukwan in 2007, where they're talking about Mangaung in 2012, and, and, and all of that. So, for the ANC to lose or to drop in numbers in an election in a region where they are the strongest uh, in terms of uh, their own membership, it's actually very quite significant uh, from that perspective. But we also have to remember that much as the region has been high, uh, in, well, the ANC has been having a lot of numbers or uh, members in that region that also attracted a lot of controversies internally so because everyone was clamoring to control that region so we remember that there was Zandile Kumet who was head of that region at some point who's on trial for corruption who's on trial for corruption and that has uh, also so so discord in the party she, she has got the, a, a, a following of her own and it, she doesn't conform to party traditions and practices she does her own thing she has got her own members who follow her and then we've got the deployee now the mayor uh, uh, um, Golisi Kaunda, who comes from the different factions still trying to build up confidence and support from the region and clearly is not coming and then there's the Zuma grouping which has al always been there obviously unhappy now about the way Zuma has been treated and they've not been forceful in the campaign the release of Zuma a controversial release of Zuma from, from, from prison didn't necessarily help matters there. Uh, even the, 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 the recent unrest didn't really help matters there. So all of these factors were seeing them coming together and, and, and weighing heavily down on the ANC. Before I ask you to tell us what you think were the major factors in Kumilelo that swayed the vote away from the ANC, Dobby, do you have an idea at this stage where those votes went, where those percentages went? Yes, absolutely. So. Um, we know that the, the DA had 26 before, they still have 26. Okay. So that, that didn't go anywhere. State right? flat, yes. Exactly. The EFF went from 4% in 2016 to 10% this year. So more than double, right? So that's where six percentage points went. Um, Action SA, and maybe just to say as well, you know, if you just look at the townships in isolation, they went from 
uh, 4% in the townships to uh, 14% in the townships uh, in this election. So that's an, that's an enormous that? growth, the EFF. EFF, yeah, okay. yeah. So, so EFF growing their margins in the uh, Etiquini townships. Exactly, places like Umlazi, right? Really big inroads for the EFF, and we saw that in 2019 as well. So that was one of the key drivers. They, then you have Action SA, kind of taking 2% across the board, right? And they took a, from, some from the townships, some from the suburbs, some from the Indian electorate, just, you know, 2% altogether. Um, and then the, the other interesting one is just the IFP. Um, they went from 4% now to call it 7%. Um, so if you add it up, it's sort of six extra percentage points for the EFF, two more for Action SA, so that's eight, and then another kind of- 11. Exactly, which is roughly it, right? Um, and, and, you know, all of it, and the, the IFP numbers also coming largely from the townships, obviously, so, yeah. Kumalelo, are you surprised that the EFF seems to be the biggest beneficiary of the drop in vote for the ANC in Etiquini? I'm not surprised because the, the EFF largely benefits from young black voters who are disgruntled. So a lot of them would have been, some of them would have been people that would ordinarily have belonged to the Youth League. <clears throat> and the Youth League of the ANC, we all know, all over the country is in disarray. So those people, Julius Malema, the leader of the EFF, largely appeals to them. Um, and he also obviously speaks the, the populist language of, you know, giving grants to everyone. So the people that uh, may not be familiar with issues of fiscal uh, discipline of the country would easily fall into that. So, but it also gives us an indication that there's a, there's a ground for, 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 for parties to plow. There's, there's still a lot of uh, opportunities for opposition parties to get into Kazet and uh, with, as a second populist uh, province in the country after Gauteng. So there's a lot of ground for, for small parties to, to venture in there. In July we saw these terrible riots um, in KwaZulu Natal and, and it was mainly focused around Durban. Do you think this impacted the election, the turnout, um, people deciding not to vote, specifically not for the ANC, the very low turnout we saw in, in townships specifically? That might have had a, a, an impact, but we can't say to what extent, because obviously I mean, Eteguin was one of those uh, metros under siege um, and it might have perhaps frightened people to go out and vote but also there's also been recent incidents of violence that in the lead up to the ANC nominating its candidates in that area so all of that I think could have had an influence in terms of voter perception. Corruption, faction fights, violence, riots, uh, toxic mix and a, I guess a, almost a perfect storm for Lover to turn out and a terrible election for the ANC. I want us to move on to the second and the last uh, metro of the eight we called this morning Derby, mm -hmm. which is Buffalo City, uh, yes. where is London is based. What, what did we see there? So not as spectacular a result as in Etiquini, um, but still in a way very surprising. Um, it's the ANC's best result by far and they uh, in the metros um, and the reason I say that is because they stayed exactly where they were in 2016 so um, projecting the ANC to 60% that is on the dot exactly what they got in 2016 um, the DA on 19% down from 23 so minus 4 there uh, the EFF going from 8% to 12% so growth for the EFF in Buffalo City uh, and then the UDM one um, and the, so the only real shift in, in that kind of makeup was uh, the, the DA dropping four and the EFF gaining four. How did that happen? The DA, the DA basically lost half or more than half uh, of its vote in the townships, which didn't go to the ANC, but actually went to the EFF. So I think that's kind of the, the electoral math that changed there. Um, but you know, the rest of the trends all the same, a big suburban turnout gap, yeah. Pumilelo, you uh, lived in East London uh, when yeah. you edited the Daily Dispatch <coughs> and you know the province very well. What is interesting, we have a wall in our office here where we put up the results from all the metros with yeah. red arrows for those who went down and green arrows for those who went up. Yeah. And the only two cities or metros where the ANC went up slightly, Buffalo City, and almost stayed flat Nelson Mandela Bay, yeah. or maybe go up point something, cool. and both in the Eastern Cape. What does yeah. that tell us? What I can tell you about Buffalo City is that it's one of the few remaining safe havens for the ANC. I wouldn't compare it necessarily with uh, Nelson Mandela Bay, mm -hmm. which is also a metro, but I, I put it in the league of other cities that are not necessarily metros. metros yes. But if you look at the, their size in terms of revenue, in terms of the uh, number of people who live in like that area, Bombelas. that's your Mbombela, that's your Polokwan. Yes. And uh, alongside Buffalo City, those, those cities are safe havens for the ANC. Across the board, the ANC is still getting uh, on the 60s, 60s. Uh, upwards. And what happens in those municipalities is that 
the opposition parties have not uh, uh, entered the electoral market aggressively. So the politics uh, of those metros, are, are, of those cities, are fought within the ANC. So you almost find like the ANC as one organization. It's a lot of parties within it. And the contestation happens there. It doesn't spill out. But I can assure you that the trend we're seeing with the major metros where the ANC has dropped is that the next, the next drop unless the ANC self-correct or fulfills its promise to self-correct, the next trend of dropping from the metros is going to those cities. For now, they are safe heavens. Sorry? I, I, I completely agree. And an interesting point about that, I think, is that it kind of makes sense that the opposition parties that are smaller parties, that have fewer resources, that have smaller activist base, focused on the places that were most winnable first to try to target new voters, right? To actually syst systematically get voters to switch from the ANC to you know, any given opposition party requires communication, it requires campaigning, it requires you know, effort. Um, and so I think the reason why we see this a little bit is because that effort was primarily focused on the metros for a long time, right? Um, and I think I agree, now that the, the numbers in the metros have shifted, um, I, can, I can foresee the, the, the opposition party saying, okay, what's next on the hit list? Oh, it's Polokwane, Nelspreit, uh, Mumbela, uh, it's Buffalo City, uh, it's Kim Kimberley, Solplaiki, right? So there's, there's, I think it's Rustenburg, it's Maribeng, it's all those places. And that will make someone like Ivan Mashaba very boyish about the 2024 election. Yeah. He's seen successes all across the board, townships and suburbs, and yeah. maybe approach cities like that going yeah. forward. Exactly, but I think it's not just them. I think all of the opposition parties, sure. and and in particular, actually, the EFF, mm. because because you you know if you think back about the campaign for the last three or four weeks, um, I just recall seeing coverage constantly of Herman Mashaba in Gauteng, Cyril Ramaphosa in kind of all of the major metros, right? Um, John Stiernesen in yes, most of the major metros and some key municipalities they were targeting. But constantly seeing images or while that was happening of Julius Malema doing huge crowds all over Northwest, uh, all over the Northern Cape, uh, all over places in the Eastern Cape, KZN, etc. And it, it was just that the, the EFF spent more time in rural South Africa in this election than disproportionately than some of the other parties. I'm not sure if it paid off for them or not. Yes. Um, but but I think their mindset is already a little bit in there. Yeah. Let's move into the coalition kitchen, as I call it, because. The metros are important. That's where 70% of South Africans yeah. live in the cities where they work. It's our economic hubs. Our cities have to work for our country to survive. So let's start with Johannesburg, the city <laughs> of gold. And Pumalela, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Yeah. The final result we're looking at, uh, Davi, uh, as provided by um, our forecaster, um, is ANC on 33%, the DA on 27%, Action SA on 16%, the EFF on 11 and the Patriotic Alliance on 3 and then the smaller parties 2 and some 1%. Yeah. So the coalition talks have started. We've heard this afternoon from the ANC's Jesse Duarte and Paul Machatile that they are not uh, allegedly desperate to be in government. They'd rather stay in opposition. They make deals with people they don't agree with on principle. They didn't clarify what those principles are, but I think we can all we can all figure that out for ourselves. And then we heard Herman Mashaba again confirming he will not go into almost said bad coalition with Action SA and we have also heard from the ANC. Action SA will not go into coalition with the ANC. With the ANC, I'm sorry about that. And then the DA has said they are starting to talk to people and there's high level discussions going on. But Mpumilelo, looking at these results in Johannesburg, yeah. um, what are the likely scenarios we're looking at here? Look, let's start with a small party there. I think the, the IFP is missing there. I'm not sure, Davi, whether you think they won't get anything. They might get two. Uh, uh, two, yeah. So the, the IFP uh, and the PA, this, which are the two small parties, are the parties that are, are amenable to collaborate with, with either the ANC mm. or the DA. Um, the EFF, we have seen in the past elections, they're also amenable to collaborate with the DA. But if you put Herman Mashaba's Action SA in the mix, the EFF and Action SA are more likely to, uh, uh, to, to find each other than the EFF finding each other with the DA. However, there's a tricky situation because there's also the ANC, which even if it's not getting most, uh, the majority votes, it's got most votes. And the EFF and the ANC 
are more likely to find each other than the EFF and the DA, for example. So what will happen, in my view, is that it will be difficult to isolate each metro when the uh, when the coalitions are being yeah. uh, put together. Mm. So what will happen is that there will be host trading mm. that will involve yeah. other metros. So you will have a deal that is crafted in Johannesburg, but not everything about that deal is about Johannesburg. So the deal might include what are the permutations in 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 in, in Swan. Mm. So you will have those interlocked deals. And the consequences are, are going to be very interesting. So let's be clear, there's eight metros in South Africa. Of those eight, three um, are, have majority parties. In Cape Town, the DA has the majority, they can rule on their own. In Buffalo City, the ANC on their own. And in Mangaung, the ANC just hold on, uh, held on to that 51% uh, majority. So we're sitting with five hung metros, okay, of which yeah. Johannesburg is one. Uh, Darby, I drew up very rough sketches here of possible scenarios. Um, Am I correct to say that probably the most likely scenario in Johannesburg and Swane is for the DA and Action SA to get together because of the historical ties. Mashaba was the previous mayor of the DA. There was obviously some bad blood, but as we know, there's no permanent foes in politics. Yeah. Um, between them, they've got 27 plus 16 percent, which, according to my calculations, leaves them to find another eight percentage points. Yeah, um, that's possible. Uh, yeah, at a stretch, yes. So it would, it, you know, in Johannesburg, that would require the Patriotic Alliance, the IFB, uh, and the Freedom Front Plus as a start, which gets them about six of the eight. Yes. Uh, and then they would have to go through the rest of the list, which I don't have on me right now. But yes. but but basically, try to corral. ACDP everyone. they'll get. Yes, exactly. So so it's again a sort of 2006 Cape Town situation where yes. you're managing a very large kind of coalition. Um, so yes, that's possible. Um, I mean, the, the one which I think, based on the dis in the discussion in the campaign, we shouldn't completely discount is ANCDA, right? Like the, uh, okay, but I want us to end with that because okay. that is my scenario C, okay. which I think Pumileto thinks is 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 is, is uh, stillborn. But let's get there. But okay, the, so the first alliance and actually the second one, which is an ANC plus EFF coalition, yes, leaves them with seven percentage points short. I don't see it. So, 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 but what's interesting for Milelo yeah. is that both a DA Action SA coalition mm. or an ANC EFF coalition leaves both those coalitions with seven to eight percentage short, yeah. which means those small parties like the PA, the ACDP, the IFP are going to be absolutely pivotal, the Freedom Front Plus. Yes, that's why the scenario of the Action SA working with the DA it looks more plausible because what they can do, they can do a trade off that one of them, either Action SA leads uh, Tuan and the DA leads uh, Johannesburg or vice versa. And then these deals are struck like that and they all accommodate the small parties. But that will depend the extent to which both of them feel so strongly against the ANC uh, that, that they will do everything in their power to unite the small parties to form strong governments uh, in both Swan and, uh, and, and Johannesburg. Well, we know Mashaba, I mean, if we can believe his word, on several occasions I've said no deal with the ANC. Mm. So that permutation is out of the window. Um, so we all left, the, the, the Action SA really only has the DA, because the Action SA can't, with the EFF alone, they are on, uh, what is it, 27. Yeah. I, I, think uh, Ma I think Mashaba has said as much, that he would rather collaborate with the DA yes. than, uh, co uh, than work with the ANC. But that tells you that, because this is the DA that, according to him, treated him so badly that he had to abandon his mayorship, yeah. he had to abandon and even resign from the DA to start a political party. That's what, so, how strong he felt about the DA. But the extent to which he's willing to work with a party that treated him like that, vis-a-vis -vis an ANC that he has never actually worked with. But he, he so, feels so strongly against the ANC, it tells you something about you know, his conviction about yes. unseating uh, the ANC. Yes. So I think the, what I think might actually make those coalition talks be impossible is who, 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 who gets what and how. That's the biggest political question that the DA and the, and the Action SA would have to answer. Because the DA, I think, might be reluctant to give Mashaba a spot where he will shine even more. Because they've seen what he's... Like has, uh, maybe mayorship. <laughs> yeah. Because, that's what he would want. Yeah, that's what he would want. Because they've seen what he has done 
in their in their support base across townships and across uh, Davi has got the numbers where HNSA has been eating every little bit of the DA support. They don't like that going to 2024. So that's a big risk for the DA yes. making yeah. Mashaba and Action SA look actually even better yeah. for the next three years by helping him managing Jobu. But can I can I make a just a slight philosophical point here? Slightly longer sure. point. Yeah. But, as part of my economic studies, um, I have done many simulations of multi-party negotiations between firms. Yeah. And the theory of economics suggests that those players are relatively rational and they optimize for their self-interest in those negotiations. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And what these parties are optimizing for, I think, is in the part of the negotiations, is their 2024 outcome. Yes. Um, and I think, I think thinking back from every party, what is the best thing for for them for 2024 on how this lands is, is a way to think about this and because of that I want to potentially suggest a, quite a radical uh, D, option D which is not on your list, um, which is forcing a minority government um, and having the luxury I think in the current situation of being in the opposition benches and one such a minority government scenario which would be quite good I think for the likes of Action SA and the DA is saying all right ANC, you were the largest party, like you've got 34%, you're larger than the DA by five, you have a moral authority to govern because you got the most votes. The obvious kind of party to help you govern is the EFF, because you guys uh, agree and the DA and the Action SA will both say you guys are corrupt parties with the same horrible agenda, but go for it. Um, which puts them then at what, 44, 44 plus 11 is 45. The Patriotic Alliance probably can feature in that scenario, which puts them at 48. And then you have a minority government of 48 in the city of Johannesburg um, with a DA and an Action SA, which can um, blame the failures that are likely to come from that um, and aggressively attack it for the next three years, positioning them perfectly for a 2024 election. I realize that is an awful outcome. I realize a lot of people will say it's a cynical outcome. But if I think about parties optimizing for their 2024 outcome, that, to me, sounds like the optimal DA and Action SA It outcome. would go against what the DA and Action SA told us during the election campaign, that they want to govern because they can govern in municipalities. They also said they refuse to work with the, with the, um, with the ANC. They refuse to work with the EFF. Um, and I'm not sure whether the Patriotic Alliance, for example, because remember, in part of that scenario one is the Patriotic Alliance is three, is yes. critical. Yes. The DA has basically said that the Patriotic Alliance is the devil. Yes. Um, and one of the other things the DA has said that they refuse to work with anyone who doesn't share their values. And knowing the DA, I can imagine there's an Excel spreadsheet somewhere on someone's computer that says party must have the following things yes, yes, before yes. we work with it. But and I'm pretty sure the PA doesn't tick all the boxes. Guys, let's talk about scenario C. We have to consider it. We have to consider it. <laughs> yes. The DA and the ANC working together. This election has showed us that South African electorate do not believe, that's my view, in a two-party system. Yeah. The two-party system has been rejected. In each of the metros, in most of the metros, both those parties suffered losses. Both those parties went down. Not only the ANC, the DA also went down in most, if not all, of the metros. Yeah. Uh, Mpumelelo, that surely, surely that must bring them closer into almost survival mode to say, listen, <laughs> ANC, we're now a 30-something party. DA, we're a 20-something party. Together we get to almost 60 or just over 60. Like maybe there's something we can figure out with Cyril Ramaphosa, phones John Steenhuisen and Helen Ziller. They sit around the table as constitutionalists. They believe in the rule of law. They believe in the free market. They believe in good service delivery. Surely that must, that must be a possibility. It's not entirely impossible. Again, if both parties are willing to trade control of metros. So if the DA, for example, agree with the ANC that each one of them is going to take either Johannesburg or Tuane, and then they agree on the set of principles that if we run Tuane, you're not going to interfere with us. Mm. Um, and then the, you, the, the other part that is going to play the role of a fires opposition. And then the same applies in Johannesburg. You, the ANC, runs Johannesburg. We will we'll be the opposition there. Mm. Um, if you have that kind of arrangement, it's, it's possible it can work out, but you have to explain to the voters because uh, most of these uh, voters that are voting the DA, they are strongly anti-ANC. And a lot of them, I mean, I, you hear them talk, I mean, in various platforms, social media, radio, everywhere. They talk about how they would like their party to collaborate with Herman Mashaba's Action SA than the ANC. So the DA will have to have a lot of explaining to do the, to their followers. The ANC itself, it has always branded the DA as an enemy. 
So now their 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 supporters will have a problem now when suddenly the, the ANC is sleeping with the enemy called the DA. How are they going to explain that exactly. to their to their partners? But the other last point to make is the egos of party leaders. <laughs> that scenario we are painting is a hunky dory kind of a, 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 a lunch party of a, you know Cyril Ramaphosa, Helen Zille, and John Stenazen coming together, Paul Mashatila and them. Is it really possible? It may not be because. The election, in the run-up to the election, people insult each other, they call each other names. Now Helen Zille must look uh, at Paul Mashatila and all this, and Gwede Mantashe and say, well, I want to shake hands and bread bread with you. Um, it's, it's, it's a very difficult... But, but isn't, isn't that what the electorate is telling us, through the turnout, the very low turnout, through the way they voted, that they are, to use Hamer Mashaba's word, gutful with these guys, they want service delivery. So if you're a DA or an ANC supporter living in Johannesburg, you don't actually care so much, I'm asking you, yes. you don't actually care so much mm. about that poster of anti-ANC or anti-DA anymore. You want rand water to work, you want city power to work, mm. and you want your bottles fixed. And I mean, do you think we could go into that kind of narratives or will we come back to corruption and racism and those big themes? To, to be honest with you, as Davi says, if if the sole criteria for people to work together was rational outcomes <laughs> of a discussion, so in other words, more pragmatic, <laughs> issue-based, very reasonable, we put our cards there, I tell you what, it would not look as complicated to form a coalition as the numbers uh, uh, suggest at the moment. However, in politics, what interferes with rationality is egos. Yes. So, and... and we should just... I have an ego chicken here at the entrance to the building. Can I just Guys, say, I just, I just, I just say one, thing, five yes. one thing? If the DA has any interest in the outcome of the 2024 election, it basically makes option C, the coalition with the ANC, impossible. Like, impossible. Impossible. Like, Even though Helen Zeller was caught on tape in a year or two ago saying that that is something that's possible. Well, and has always said that uh, the reshaping of politics, I think yes, that was... But uh, the whole idea of the was, reshaping was to bring ANC voters into the DA not to form a coalition with the ANC. So the, the suburban... Well, that doesn't happen. But yes, but the suburban problem that the DA has with colored voters, with white Afrikaans voters in the Freedom Front Plus, frankly, with white voters going to Action SA, is multiplied by 100 if they go into coalition with the ANC. Okay, 20 is easier for the scenario A. Yeah. In 20, yeah. we have the DA on 34%. We have the Freedom Front Plus on a incredible 8% yeah. Yeah. and Action SA on an incredible 9% in their first election. Darby, that takes them home. That is it. That does take them home. Um, uh, well, actually, um, the just sorry for springing this on you now, um, but in the last little while, the projection has on the decimals shifted slightly to the, to the DA being 32 in Trane and not 33. Okay. So option A equals 49. And no longer equals 50. Well, 49, you need the ACDP. Exactly. Or so, probably, yeah. probably yes. Though. But you know, yeah. we might be surprised about the Freedom Front Plus. Uh, people, I, including myself, I, I see them as the right party on the right. But I think that they might surprise people because I think they're a bit more pragmatic about issues. Yes. Uh, so, they may be the guys yes. that bring the rationality into the table, which is why, of all the opposition parties, <laughs> uh, 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 the Freedom Front Plus is one that served in the ANC National Cabinet. They had a deputy minister position under Peter Jacob Zuma, yes. but uh, Peter Mulder. So there's a, there's a sign that uh, they may be willing to collaborate more on a pragmatic basis rather than on deep emotional anti this or anti that. Another option would be ANC and EFF again, as we spoke about. Uh, they have worked together in Ekuleni before. In Tswane, they could get to about 45, 44%. Again, they need the smaller parties and then the DA ANC option, which you have spoken about. <laughs> um, in Ekuleni, just to, to, to maybe conclude, and then, then we keep to the Gauteng uh, metros. In, the, in Ekuleni, uh, there's very few options, Darby. The ANC yeah. is on 38. They, meet, they need only about 12, 13. The EFF is on 14%. Yeah. So, I mean, it's either... Uh, I mean, it, it, it's very likely to be an ANC EFF yes. coalition, which is already the case, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think that is that is highly likely. Um, and uh, yeah, and as you say, I think that also just the, the personalities involved in that discussion kind of lend themselves to that outcome. I think. Am I correct but that in Ekuleni, the 
ANC on 38 and the EFF on 14 yes. takes them to 52. So even yeah, um, even everyone else except the ANC, even if you want to try and pull off a deal like that, if you're yeah. the DEA or Michelle, but you're going to have to include but the EFF, which is not going to exactly. happen. Exactly. The only anti-ANC deal in Ecuadorani includes the EFF. EFF. Yeah. So that, that's, a, that's a perfect scenario there for, for, for the EFF. And they, it, it makes it more likely because Mosvalde de Masina and Julius Malema are quite close. Yeah, they However, are. There's one big issue that EFF needs to decide. Wherever it actually forms a coalition, does it become part of the government of that municipality yes. or not? Yes. Because so far, its coalition arrangement is to always say to the governing party, we will uh, vote on issue by issue, yes. which gives them the leverage to collapse that government anytime when they choose to, knowing very well they don't have any MMCs that have vested interest in protecting their position. So, to, for stability, the EFF for the first time has to make that choice. And that is exactly the same scenario in Etiquini. Yes. Because the ANC is on 44%, exactly. they need six, seven percentage points. They can go with the IFP or with the EFF. So, you know, as you suggested previously in Kumile, there will probably be a national deal between the ANC and the EFF yes. for two or three metros, yeah. right? Yeah. But then I want us to take another last minute, if I can ask our producer, uh, Charlene, please to give, give us another one or two minutes to talk about Nelson Mandela Bay, because yeah. this gets crazy. I think Peter called, <laughs> Peter the our colleague called it the hodgepodge of parties. What I see, Darby, and please correct me here, in Nelson Mandela Bay, both the DA and the ANC will need to make deals with at least four, five, or even six yeah. other parties yeah, yeah, to yeah. govern Nelson Mandela Bay. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, the DA is on 41 in our projection, right? Yes. 41 plus uh, the ACDP's two yes. gets you to 43. The PA has one, then you have 44. Yes. The Freedom Front Plus has one, then you're 45. The UDM has one, then you're 46. Good has one, then you're 47. If Good wants to, if look good at wants the, to yeah. play with the deal. So then you're 47. Who, who else is left? Then there is the AIM. So there's very interesting community parties. Yes. There's four local parties from the Eastern Cape, Pumelelo, yeah. that are looking to get one or sometimes two seats in Nelson Mandela Bay. You have the Northern Alliance Party, yep. You have that's got two, that's on two percentage points. That's critical. You've got the, the DOP Party, which doesn't stand for booze, but for defenders of people. And then you have uh, Kusta Jack, who was previously an ANC yeah. leader, yeah. a Bantu integrity movement on one percentage point. The DAs and or the ANC EFF will basically need all or, or many of these to form a government. How yeah. difficult is that going to be? And how long is that going to take? Look, if we look at history, we will learn that the DA has got an ex experience more than any of the parties at putting together a ramshackle <laughs> of a coalition government. And they have done that in Cape Town. Uh, Helen Zille, when Helen Zille was mayor, the DA didn't have an out outright majority there. There was a whole lot of parties, almost of similar nature. And then she led that coalition uh, uh, government and finished the term up to the point where the DA was able to consolidate and transitioned and got the majority support base. So I, I noticed that in this election, she was literally camping at Nelson Mandela Bay. Yeah. So whoever becomes mayor for the DA there, I mean, they've already decided uh, uh, Helen Zill, I can imagine, will probably be the biggest advisor on how to lead that coalition government. The, the, only, the only problem there, I, I, I would imagine, is good. Because yes. of the animosity between yes. Patricia Delille and Helen Zille and the way she left the, D the DA, it will be very, very difficult to secure the support of good. Well, they may not need good, but that is going to become very interesting and take very long. Um, bearing in mind, we have two weeks yeah. uh, for councils to be finalized. Two weeks after the election result is formally declared for councils to be finalized. We're going to have to leave it at that, Darby. It's so important. I need to say one thing. Can I like one Go, minute? go, 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 go. Is the Northern Alliance is the single most important party there because all of those small parties kind yes. of lean towards being more friendly towards yes. the ANC or more friendly towards the DA. But with those leaning, nobody gets to 50. The Northern Alliance, I think, is the single most important decision. Our colleague Kelly Anderson is standing by to tell us what you have been talking about today on our platforms and on social media. Kelly, please enlighten us. Thank you, Adrian. Um, I think that all eyes are going to be on coalitions in the next few weeks, and I'm going to circle back to that in a minute. Um, but firstly, I just want to talk about the ANC. Um, so we've seen that the News 24 forecaster has put national support for the ANC during these elections below 50%, which is historical. Um, so I asked our readers today, I know we're still in this election, but I kind of wanted to 
kind of look ahead to the 2024 national election and we asked our readers, do you think that the ANC will go below 50% in the 2024 elections? So we ran this poll on news24.com. 86% said yes, they will not be able to recover and 14% said no, they will be able to regain support. Ran the same poll on Twitter, pretty similar results. 82% saying yes, they will go below 50%. 18% saying no, they'll be able to win the election. Same poll on Instagram, 84% saying yes, 16% saying no. So not a strong show for the, of confidence for the ANC across the board there. And we saw these sentiments echoed um, with our readers uh, 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 on an article today uh, that we published, Ikutweni, disastrous results for the ANC as party drops 11 percentage points below 50 percent. And this is what some of our readers had to say. The ANC are finally paying for their arrogance, corruption and poor service delivery in Durban. Another reader said, what did they expect? How can these results be a surprise? Their handling of the civil unrest was the disaster here. They are arrogant, self-serving and lazy. Perhaps now they might begin to understand that they serve the, at the behest of the people. Another comment here, we need to look at the broader issue of voter apathy or more specifically voters walking away from democracy. Once poor and marginalized people feel that democracy has nothing to offer them and then big trouble starts. Look at the rest of the continent. People disenfranchise themselves and then only chaos can solve their problems. We saw a bit of that in July. Even the EFF can't, if even the EFF can't attract people back with their wild rhetoric, then we should be worried. It is myopic to celebrate this as an ANC EFF loss, but a loss for democracy. Another reader, the DA needs to be upfront with their voters about their intentions. Are they planning to make a serious challenge for national government or are they content with consolidating their base at 20 to 25 percent? If the former, some serious introspection and urgent changes are required. If the latter, voters need to be told so we can decide if we are supporting a party that is happy with one-fifth representation is really what we want. Personally, I want a viable alternative to the ANC and national government at the 2024 elections. Now, we've seen a bit of anxiety around the idea of coalitions, understandably, but I actually spotted a few comments today that showed a bit of opti optimism for coalitions, which I wanted to share with you. Um, one reader wrote, I'm pleased that most metros will be governed through coalition. It means more checks and balances, oversight, and a more diverse representation. Think about how corruption can now be avoided when you have members from another party watching over your back. Another reader wrote, the only way for South Africa to succeed is through the collaboration of its many diverse people. We all need each other. It's great some, some smaller community-based parties are getting a foot in the door and are breaking up the dominance of the big players. And the last one, time for the ANC and DA to pocket their pride and talk coalitions before these hung councils become a feeding frenzy and continu continuing round of musical chairs with no attention to service delivery. Party winning most votes in each, in each district nominates the mayor. The people need service delivery, not guerrilla warfare. So some really interesting conversations happening amongst our readers and we would love for you to join the conversation and hear your opinions. So if you'd like access to our comment section, all you have to do is subscribe to News24. You can do so at news24.com forward slash subscription. That is it from me. Back to you, Adrian. Time for the ANC and the DA to pocket their pride. That's quite strong words from a reader there. Will we see that? Are we entering a new era of politics? Are we crossing a Rubicon? The next 48 hours will reveal. Thank you very much, Darby Schools, Pumalelam Kabela, for joining me tonight. We will be keeping a very close watch on the Coalition Kitchen playing out here below us at The Rock in Tuane. Uh, on the smoke stoop, uh, in restaurants around the town, uh, and probably even in the union buildings, who knows. Thank you for joining us. Keep an eye on News24 for all breaking news about this year's municipal elections. Good night.